Greetings, this is Minister Asia, and you are now tuned in to an episode of the Ambassador's Hour. The Ambassador's Hour is a telecommunication outreach ministry that is solely dedicated to speaking in present truths. You can find us on YouTube. You can go on the Ambassador's Hour and like any of our former videos, share them and subscribe them, then turn on your notifications and you will see each time that we upload a video. So we'll get done with the brass tacks by going ahead and telling you to give this video a big thumbs up so that the gospel can be spread throughout all of the nations. Ambassadors Hour partners with Loving People by Sharing Christ, which is a Christian support page found on Facebook. It was founded by Minister Renata C. McFadden and her best friend, Heather Wynn. They're on Loving People by Sharing Christ. You can find daily devotionals, videos, and graphics, clip arts, things of that nature that are uplifting and edif edifying and helps people that may be struggling feel the love of God. And we do so by sharing Christ. If you happen to find yourself in a dilemma and you need prayer, or you need that actual physical tangible support you can inbox the support page and if you're in our geographical region and your requests are possible we will adhere to them you can also email the ambassadors hour at ambassadorsforchrist.as at gmail.com and inbox renata c mcfadden or asia P. Searcy. So now that we have the brass tacks out of the way, let us go ahead and say our mantra and pray and get into the true nature of the contents of this video. Our mantra is, for I know who I am and whom that I stand, whom empowers me to be. I am an ambassador for Christ and this is the hour to recognize me. Bow your heads, close your eyes. If you're in the car, just lift your hands and let's begin to pray because we don't want to do anything without acknowledging God because in him we live move and have our being we might as well not start to move unless we move in him dear heavenly father we worship you lord god we ask that we decrease as you increase so that you can get the glory out of every area of our lives father god we ask that you begin to um, release a fresh anointing that will remove every burden and destroy every yoke that's upon the people, Lord God, because we perceive that there are a lot of people that are in bondage, Lord God. We pray right now in the name of Jesus that you do just like you did in the book of Isaiah chapter 6 and you take the coals off the altar and you cleanse our lips and purge us, Lord God, and you release a glory, you manifest your glory because we see that you are high and lifted up and we want you trained to feel the temple of our hearts lord god we pray for those who don't know you as lord and savior we pray that your holy spirit begin to convict them lord god and it brings about a desire to want to know you in a capacity they've never known you before lord god and we pray for those who are sick because we know that your word says that by your stripes they are healed and we believe that they are already healed lord god we thank you in advance for what your spirit is going to do during the duration of this video and we believe lord god that a um, plethora of lives are going to be changed through the 52 days of videos that you're going to release in jesus name we pray amen now a couple nights ago while i was on watch night prayer i began to speak um prophetically to my sister and to the subscribers and began to just release a lot of things that the holy spirit was saying to me at that time and during the video i kept on saying 52 within 52 days god is going to do this and 52 days you will see about 52 videos and i kept saying 52 52 52 and so what i'm going to do is minister to you briefly on the topic of its restoration time and as we study restoration you'll know why god said 52. the literal definition for the word re restoration is returning to former owner place or condition so returning a thing or person to its former owner to a place or a condition um and that's the first definition of restoration in this hour what god's gonna do is for those people who are 
struggling in their realm of the spirit. They're questioning their calling. They don't know where they fit. They don't know what they're supposed to do. God is going to restore you to your rightful place in him. He's going to give you um, greater anointing in this hour and he's going to put you in the rightful position and restore you to your right condition everything that the enemy stole from you and everything that he took for you from 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 you unlawfully he's going to restore that to you it says that he's going to return to its former owner there are some people that have been stolen from god because of various offenses and things that happened to them the enemy was able to prey on them because they were so powerful and they were anointed they he seen the effects that he that that individual would have on his kingdom so he allowed various distractions to come to destroy them and he stole them by distracting them and allowing them to drift off into their own devices like we talked about in the video the other day and so in this season during the next 52 days god is going to restore them and return them to their rightful owner which is him the second definition for the word restoration is to return a um to return a hereditary monarch to a throne a uh, head of the state to government or a regime to power so to return a hereditary monarch to a throne a head of state to government and a regime to its power so let's look at that we if you look at isaiah 57 a lot of uh, a lot of times we look at isaiah 54 and 17 well, we quote that scripture, no weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper. Well, if you look at it, it says, no weapon that is formed against us will be able to prosper. Every tongue that rises against us in judgment, he shall condemn. And it goes down to talk about that we're the heritage of the most high God. When we look at this, there is a certain position that we have in the kingdom of God and we are his monarchs we're designed to rule and we're designed to reign and there are certain people in position in the army of God and our regimes are going to be stored back to our rightful power and you know according to Isaiah that uh, 27 and you look at 26 and 27 it begins to talk about how things were destroyed and then it talks about how um it was the anointing and then it defines the anointing as the burden removing yoke destroying power of god in isaiah 26 and so during this season god is going to do that as i talked about in the video the other night there is a devotional that you can find on loving people by sharing christ that talks about nehemiah and him re rebuilding the wall and i begin to share with my sister that i felt her when they were releasing that devotional on loving people by sharing Christ it began to um my baby leaped like Elizabeth and Mary and I'm like I feel you on that and she talked about Nehemiah and God began to remind me of some things and release fresh revelation even during that video about 52 in the book of Nehemiah if you look at chapter one and you read verses one through three, it talks about the, the month, date, time, year, and the place that Nehemiah was in. And he was actually the king's cupbearer. And he had a wonderful, prestigious position. It came with a lot of responsibility because if you were the king's cupbearer and you had the responsibility of drinking and tasting certain things, prior to the king so that you wouldn't be poisoned so that denoted that nehemiah had a really significant position in the presence of god because if you look at mark where it tells how you can drink poisonous beverages and it will not harm you he had to know god in that capacity and have faith to know that even as he sipped those beverages prior to dispersing them to the king that they wouldn't harm him and um he had 
such a position with the king that he was able to go to him and say, hey, I want to go somewhere. After, as he, you read Nehemiah chapter one, you'll look in there and you'll see that his brothers came and they gave him word. And he asked them, he inquired of them about the remnant of people that were left in Jerusalem. And he, they told him, they were like, look, those people that were saved from exile were in great distress and they were in disgrace and they were in trouble. And so because Nehemiah had, um, because you begin to look at your confidants and your constituents and the people that you're in covenant with, because he had that relationship with the king, he was able to go to him and say, I want to go somewhere. God began to release in him a uh, urge and a desire to go and find out the condition of those people, the, the ones that were um, the remnant that remained after they were exiled. And he went and looked at the walls of Jerusalem and he asked the king for, hey, can I step off post for a while so that I can go and hearken to the needs and requests of God's people. And not only was he able to be released for a moment from his position, he was able to be provided with the resource, resources that he needed to complete the job that God had given him. And when the king released released him and gave him the resources not only then that he have everything he need to complete the task he became a provincial governor and there um over the province and he began to have so much authority and jurisdiction jurisdictional authority just because of the assignment that he was given when he went there he began to survey things and he put certain people in position to repair the breaches and that is what God is doing in this hour through the ambassador's hour if you look at Nehemiah after he put those people in place to repair the breaches then they begin to rebuild the walls and when they rebuild the walls they rebuilt the walls of Jerusalem in 52 days. In 52 days, they built walls that had been burnt, destroyed, and laid in rubbish for over 75 years. So that's why I said 52. In 52 days, God is going to do something so profound for the ambassador's hour, loving people by sharing Christ, and for you all, because it's restoration time. God has restored us to our rightful position in him. He's given us back that power that we forfeited along the way and that the enemy came in to steal, kill, and destroy us with. He tore down some walls. People look at walls like, man, she got her walls up, her guards up. They look at it in a negative connotation. But God has two different perspectives when you look at walls. Walls that some people look at that will imprison you are the walls that other people put up to be empowered. They look at them for an a significant way of protection and divine covering there are certain things that God does with walls that as we begin to teach these next 52 days you're like man I never ever looked at it like that I didn't even know that building a wall in my life was so important that being on the wall as a watchman a prayer warrior and an intercessor was so pertinent to God and it was imperative that I did these things in my life that my position on my wall was so important hmm. so also now let's look at the numbers um 52 and let's look at what walls mean and then we'll conclude the teaching for today um the number 52 is comprised of the numbers five and the number two and so we all know that the number five is grace and so god is releasing a grace in this hour for you there are some people who have been in sin for a very long time. And the Bible says that where there is sin, grace does more abide. And there's a grace for those people. And now don't think that I'm condoning sin. But God needs you to cover those people and pray for them so that they can be restored to the fellowship and they can be in their rightful position with God. So as God begins to release grace, grace, grace comes when things have been torn up like a tornado has come. Grace, grace shows up like it did in Samuel when David looked around in Ziglag and there was rubbish 
from the people stealing the wives and the setting the cities on fire. And when he began to inquire of the Lord, should he re should he pursue? You know, and he was like, Yeah, are you gonna pursue? You're gonna um overtake and without fail you're going to recover all and so what god is doing now because it's restoration time he's restoring the years that the canker worm the palm worm the locusts and the caterpillar have eaten away in your life but he's not going to restore those things in a natural capacity he's going to restore those things in the spirit because the spirit realm is the causal realm and as he begins to restore those things in the spirit he's going to cause those things to manifest in the natural but it's going to start with a place of prayer as you begin to restore the walls and restore and repair those breaches in your prayer life then god is going to release glory and you know the first time that he mentioned the word glory in genesis that meant stuff there's a certain blessing that's about to be manifested during this time of res restoration and there is a certain level of prosperity that's going to be released but it's going to take dedication to the things of god while we spend our time and we worry about a natural empire and we watch it like it's coming on tonight and i probably will tune in after shots fired but as we take our time to worry about those natural empires we have to begin to worry about the spiritual empire and what our position is and who we're called to be just like he told jeremiah before for I formed you in your mother's womb. I formed you to be a, na a prophet to the nations. That has so much power and premise because the prophets are to uproot and do so many other things that we're going to teach about within the next 52 days. We're going to talk about what the remnant is. We're going to talk about the pertinence of building a prayer wall, what it means to be a watchman, and what it means to be a prophetic voice to the nations and what God's glory and his presence is going to be. And so I came by today on this video to just merely talk about what God is going to do and what all he's going to restore in the next 52 two days. So I said the, the number 52 was comprised of both the number five and the number two. The number five stands for grace. Also, if you look at the number five, it brings about certain things like um, personal freedom. In five days, God can free you in a way that you wouldn't even imagine. Because you look at how he created the earth and then he did all those things in certain days. Within seven days, and then he rested. So in five days, God can do something for you and free you in such a way that you will never, ever um, understand. All of this is scripture based. And if you have any questions, cares, or concerns, email me and I will send you my notes. And you can look at all of these scriptures that correlate with the things that I'm telling you. And so it also five is grace, personal freedom, curiosity, and courage, motivation, progress, um, adaptability, and also um, versatility. So. 52 is comprised of five and two. And so I just said to you what five means, personal freedom, curiosity and courage, motivation, progress, adaptability, and versatility. In this hour, in the next 52 days, God is going to begin to change a lot. And he's going to release an anointing in the next 52 days that will allow you to have adaptability to the things that he's going to do. Some people may leave some things may shift you may have to walk away from things or forfeit some things but he's going to give you the anointing to adapt to him because five is grace there's a grace for everything you lose because it's going to be like job he'll give you a double portion for the things that you lose during these next 52 days there's going to be some choices that have to be made in your life you're gonna have to choose you this day whom you're gonna serve you're gonna have to choose to make time to pray you're gonna have to choose to begin to um disassociate with some things because the number two stands for covenant and you have to realize that the relationships that you have in your life you have to begin to analyze them and ask yourself does this add value to my life is it drawing me closer to god or is it pulling me away from god and if the thing is adverse then you have to begin to set ties with it so that you can reap the blessings benefits promotions that god has for you in this hour so the number two like i said it denotes covenant the also the number two stands for attributes of um let me read my notes it stands for the attributes of duality 
which is two, balance, harmony, cooperation, partnerships, adaptability again, selflessness, devotion, service, duty to your divine life purpose and soul mission. And so as you begin to think about the number 52 in this hour, God is going to release a grace. He's going to begin to restore broken fellowship. He's going to allow you to get beyond yourself so that you can get a cooperation. There may be a way of administering because the Bible says that there is diversities, different ways of administration, but the same God, different, different operations, but the same spirit, the same God. And so in this hour, he's going to release um, some people who were in the back. He's going to bring them to the forefront and they're going to begin to operate and their ways of doing things may be different than you're accustomed to. But he's going to give you an ability to adapt to the new way of doing things because God is allowing the apostolic voices to build and he's allowing them to begin to grow and sometimes it's very difficult for people to change and grow with leadership because they are so used to things being the same way that they always were so in cooperation partnership and um, adaptability adaptability balance and harmony the bible says a false balance is an abomination to the Lord. And so he's going to balance out your life and he's going to begin to put you in a place where you know when it's time to pray and when it's time to relax and when it's time to do exactly what he's calling you to do. Some visions and some dreams, some businesses and some opportunities that God has allowed you to dream of and create but you haven't been able to foster them because you've been stuck in a place if you look at nehemiah he was the king's cupbearer by occupation but he had a spiritual mandate to build those walls and so there are a lot of people who are in the um, marketplace and you have influential jobs and they are very imperative but he will raise up people and resources that will stand in your stead and that will take care of all of the things that you needed in your marketplace position then you'll be able to go out and you will be able to be a provincial governor and you will begin to handle the affairs of the kingdom and you will not miss a financial beat and you will not miss um you will not feel as if you've been demoted because this will be an act of selflessness because God will be taking you to a place to do a thing for his people. But in essence, it will too bless you. So that's what you can look for God to be doing in your life within the next 52 days. Now, we looked at five, we looked at two, but those numbers in combination to bring up 52, it says is, is a personal expression of optimism, companionship, and activity. During the next 52 days, God is going to begin to allow you to be optimistic about your future. There is um, scripture in the book of Corinthians that says, Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those who love him. And it says that the Spirit reveals those things to you. And there is a prepared place for prepared people. There are so many blessings and so much opportunity that God has for you. But you have to be optimistic that His Word won't return to Him void. It may not look good. When David was at Ziglag and he seen his wives and children gone and everything was bad, he cried. He really just started crying. And then he got all cried out. And those tears, just like they talk about in Psalms 58, were taken to heaven. God sent bad results. He was able to grab the ephod. He was able to pray. And even when they wanted, they spake of stoning him, there is an encouragement that you will get when you encourage yourself. And then he got a bonus, a Holy Ghost bonus. And there was an anointing released. And God sent a person that was even he's gonna the new partnerships in this next 52 days and this new co-op um cooperation that you guys are gonna both operate on the same level and um the people that he may send for you to um partner with this time you may have previously been in opposition with them they may have been in the other army 
like the sick servant that's in that in the book you can read it it's in the bible second Samuel chapter 30 and um they were once previously hating on you or they once were your enemy but he will use your enemy and make your enemy your footstool to get you to the place that he needs for you to be in him so that you can get the victory and recover all your stuff in that something yay and so it's a personal pers um a personal expression of optimism companionship and activity and the companionship does not necessarily mean that it's going to be a natural spouse it could be an animal it could be um the level of companionship with you and the holy spirit spirit growing intimately with God during this season but that is what God is gonna do in the next 52 days he's gonna change and that something change is gonna come unexpected but with change denotes a level of growth and maturity that has come we're all going through a spiritual maturation stage and in order for us to mature in the things of God we have to get off the milk and desire the meat the sincere word of God and so this is all for today's episode of the ambassador's hour and I want you to know that the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 54 single barren woman the never bear a child and it talks about how she's gonna restore the desolate places I personally don't have children and I know that God has it like that for a reason and even though I've been dreaming about babies lately that denotes ministry and God is allowing us to minister in a more profound way than we have ever done before. There is a ministry for each of us. The Bible says that we should be able ministers. And so in this hour, even though we're called to the ministry of reconciliation, where we reconcile God's people back to him, we need to go in prayer and we need to ask God, what is my ministry? How am I supposed to serve in this earth? Some of us will be like Nehemiah, serving in the marketplace, in a working place. You may have um, the occupation of being a singer. You may have the occupation of being a waitress, a lawyer, a doctor, a teacher. You may um, be a mogul or an entrepreneur, or you may be in a position where you're high ranking in administration because the provincial governor has an administrative position to set certain things in order in the government, in all three levels and dimensions in the realms of government, three branches like the executive, judicial, and legislative branches of government. And there are some people that has a pertinent role in government. But there are some people who are like they're on a, sh a ship and their sail is set and they're just going tossed to and fro with every wind and doctrine and they don't know where they fit in the equation. No matter whether you are concrete, you've always known and you're fixated and stuck on what you know your calling is, you too, or if you're just don't know you got questions and you're pondering in the next 52 days as you watch these videos things will become begin to come more alive to you be clear and transparent you'll be able to see through it and you'll know exactly what god is saying to you and where he wants you to be in the body of christ and where you fit in this world if you're looking at your situation and you see the rubbish god is bringing us back to restore those desolate places i and the other intercessors that are divinely assigned to me will begin to pray for you so that the god will restore those breaches breach is a broken place and it's also like like a baby this breaches upside down there's some things that are turned around in your life and in these next 52 days God is going to turn those things around so that you can birth forth the ministry and the visions and the dreams and the goals that God has called you to be in the educational realm remember I talked about the five social institutions which are marriage family church government and um, the educational realm he's gonna begin to restore those things and there's some degrees that you've been seeking to get there's marriages that you've been desiring to obtain become married there are some things that God is going to do in the realm of government I don't worry about um, what our president Trump is doing I respect some of his initiatives some of them I could care less about I don't worry about um, 
what Putin is doing over in Russia and I don't worry about North Korea and Kim and all of those things that they're doing because I know that our God is greater. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. But I understand and there is our responsibility to be aware of the things that are transpiring so that we can counteract them in prayer. So during the next 52 days, tune in. I know I speak very fast and I have to work on that. But the next 52 days, we're going to begin to break these things down line upon line, precept upon precept. You can also comment in the sections below and I will read those comments and I will rebuttal to them or reply and help answer any questions, cares, concerns as we begin to see the spirit of the Lord manifest every promise that he's promised within the next 52 days. So I thank you for taking the time to tune in. Again, if you don't know Jesus, I suggest that you get to know him. And if you don't know how to be saved, you can look at Romans chapter 10, verse 9 to 10. And um, you can believe in your heart and confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus that he died on the cross and that God raised him from the dead. And that will make you saved. So I love you and goodbye for now.